we're playing tonight. We are playing. Who else is here to play? I know Deb Yeager is here. I'm here. She's playing. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're about to blow your minds. Okay, that's that's maybe a, a far stretch. Well, no, I, we're gonna blow their minds, right, Deb? Let's make this our intention. Can we set yeah. the intention? The intention Good. is okay. to expand their consciousness and blow their minds yes. and realize that they're right, in a box. That's right. Okay, now listen, everyone who's out there. Comment, engage. We want to have some fun tonight. Now, we're, we're streaming from Zoom into Facebook. So the whole world is probably trying to do this right now. <laughs> so don't go anywhere. Just let the kinks come out. Let it all play out. Don't worry. Don't get off our live because um, there's a little glitch here and there. Okay. We are here to bring it. We are here to serve you today. We are here to give you as much value as we possibly can. So before I introduce my expert guest, Deb Yeager, let me share a little bit about this new live that we are going to start doing. It's called Meeting of the Minds. Huh. We're going to have mastermind conversations with very special guests. So the idea of a mastermind started back in the 20s and the 30s when Napoleon Hill talked about masterminding with other great minds. And so people like Henry Ford, people like Andrew Carnegie, of course, Napoleon Hill all sought expertise and advice from other minds in other industries. And so I'm a part of a mastermind, a very high level one, where you pay, you know, five to six figures a year to be in. <laughs> and I thought, why not take this idea to you all, especially since we're all home and we're all planted right now, and, and I thought, let's do something where I bring on some special guests who will join me, where we get to, again, have a meeting of the minds. So we're going to talk about a topic, we're going to talk about a subject, and we're just going to riff, and we're just going to have an amazing conversation. It's, I mean, we may not, like, remember that you're watching, because Deb and I are going to get so entrenched in, these, in this topic today. And so, but we're going to check your comments, I promise. We're going to check to see. So please engage. Please share your hellos with us. Give us your warm welcome. Let us know where you're watching from. So with that said, let the masterminding begin, Deb Yeager. <laughs> oh, love welcome. it. Welcome. Thank you. I, I feel so honored to be the first one. You are. You are the first one. Uh, like of everything, I think for me, like you've been the first for a lot of things. But let I'll me take let me do a and taking your virginity. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> I or knew me. we were gonna go there. I knew we were gonna go there so quickly. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's but I want to give you a my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to. I so want to give you a a, a proper introduction. So, and then I'm going to let you, you know, take the floor and then we'll get into our conversation. But I just, I want to share with everyone that, you know, Deb has been so instrumental in my personal and professional development. Sure. I'm a leader. Sure. I've got all the, you know, the social evidence of it and all that stuff. Right. But there, but even leaders and all my leaders who are watching right now, and I know you're watching me, you are, listen, even leaders need to continue on this path of evolution, our personal individual paths of evolution. And that requires practicing some self-honesty. And it requires really looking at the results that you've created in your life and looking at the results that have been very uh, painful or unfulfilling. And then, and then looking a little closer 
to the beliefs or the you know underlying models or the things that have gotten us to this point of pain and suffering. So even you leaders out there, you need to continue this path of growth and development. And Deb Yeager has been that for me. She has been my North Star, and I look to her for all things neuro-linguistic programming, for all things hypnotherapy, timeline therapy, you name it. This is the person that I go to. So this leader goes to her for, for help with her thinking and, and all of the growth that, that, I, that we all leaders need. So Deb Yeager is a master NLP trainer. This is a woman who who had, it walks the walk, talks the talk. She has been there from the beginning. She, you know, she, she, and I love her personal story of the pivotal, in, you know, inciting incident story that we all have where she reached a crossroad. And I'll let her talk a little bit about that if she wants to. But she shares with us so openly her journey to this discovery and, and this transformation that she, she is still on, right? We don't stop. There's no stopping evolution. We're, we're continuously on this transformational path. And so Deb Yeager is also the CEO of Yeager Training right here in Austin. So you all need to go look her up afterwards. She's, you know, she's amazing. She's dominating this industry, dominating this field. And, and we're going to talk a little bit more about where you can find Deb's upcoming trainings, all of her certifications, everything that, that, you know, that I've gone through already, she is offering you all as well. So Deb Yeager, welcome to the mastermind. Wow. Thank you so much for introducing me. I feel so honored. Um, those were so many wonderful things that you said. And I love, I love how you said as a leader, um, you're going to have your journey. And, and I, I truly believe that. I mean, and we're experiencing it right now with what's going on. It's like another up level, I think for humanity, it's an up level, especially for leaders, because this is a time to step in and rise um, to really be the light, to be the North star of the people that need you right now. And it's, oh, and it's okay to be truthful with yourself. You know, just like we were talking about before we got on the call, I've had negative emotions. I've been doing my clearing work. I, I had a big girl, ugly cry, uh, a couple of weeks. Well, it was a week ago. Um, I was mourning, I was mourning the future that I thought that I was going to create. And it was more of my expectations of what I thought this year was going to be. Um, and so now that everything's been shifted and I think it's awesome because now it's like we put a pause on it and we don't know exactly what's going to happen. We've gone into the unknown and these timelines that we set forth for ourselves have been disrupted, derailed. And after I let go of the grief and I did a little pity party of like, me, I'm not going to get what I want. Blah, blah, blah. Then I saw maybe I'm going to get what I want even better and more and like even more of an up level. Um, and so it's just, I think it's important for us um, as thought leaders and everybody to really be patient with ourselves, to love ourselves through these times. Um, to know that we're all experiencing this together. And some of the stuff that you're feeling right now may not even be yours and it could be yours too. <laughs> so um, to be to be there and to allow yourself to go through the ups and downs and really feel the emotions and go through the process of emotional intelligence um, to get to the other side, because this is the, the incubator for us as humanity to literally shine and birth creativity and step up to the plate and transform from the grassroots as entrepreneurs, leaders, and, um, and uh, business owners and people that are working in corporate, we can change things. Anything that we don't like in our reality right now, we have infinite possibilities right now of what we could co-create together. So that's mm -hmm. how I feel. And we're having that conversation of just... It's such an up level. Yeah, it is requiring us to level up. I mean, there's, that's it. You're either, you know, on this train with us or you're gonna be left behind. Yeah. And so I'm calling this like time right now, a, a, a moment of grit and grace. And you touched on the word grace, having grace for ourselves right now, right? Because this is not normal circumstances, right? This is not normal. The social distancing, this virus, the uncertainty, the fear, the 
anxiety, all the things. And so I, I, I tell my leaders and my clients, let's practice some grit and some grace. Grit so that we can continue leading others, so that we can continue leading our families. I mean, first of all, self-leadership, which is also called self-mastery, is what is the foundation work that all leaders in these organizations or these public servants, uh, you know, with large constituencies out there, right? Fortune 500 leaders, even the president of the United States should all have a very strong foundation of self-leadership. And so I tell my leaders, let's practice some grace and grit for ourselves first. And that way we can go and impact and inspire these lives that need us now more than ever. So this is the opportunity to level up. <laughs> totally. And I love that you said grit because it's something that we talk about in our trainings as well in our household is that it's like having that level of relentless pursuit like you just, they're there. I mean, yes, we're going to fail along the way. Yes. We're going to make mistakes. And we know with certainty, no matter what gets thrown at us, that we are going to do what we set our mind to and being, having the grit and being able to be drugged through and thrown at and, you know, obstacle here, obstacle there, bounced off here, bounced off there and still staying on the path. You know, if whatever the path is for the individual, you know, um, whether it be helping people or if it's getting your goals or having a healthy relationship or just having a healthy relationship with yourself, you know, just be willing to do whatever it takes. Yeah. And then also having the balance of grace and being self-aware. Um, are you giving yourself self-care during these times? So you can have enough, um, you treat your body in a way to where you're going to be able to win this marathon versus, you know, sprint and then burn out too. So that's, that's another thing of just, you know, being, being able to be patient with this relentless pursuit with grit and grace. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I just love it. <laughs> we, like, I just think right now, this test that we're living through, it will be our testimony. So yeah. like, what are you going to tell your future self? So like, here you are right now living through the crap right? Like we're living through the fear. Like every week, every day the president's on, right? Every day we're looking at CDC. Every day we're looking at the trends and the numbers, right? We're looking at cases in our own area, in our own neighborhoods. We're just like tuned in into this negative energy that the news is is, is surrounding us with, but, but they have an obligation though, right, Deb, to share what's happening out there. It's up to us how we, you know, consume that information and how much we consume that information. So that's making it challenging for us to practice grit and grace because so many of us are just fixated on the current climate of fear and anxiety and uncertainty. And so I want to help our watchers right now or whoever's listening to us. I want to, you know, just bring it to you all and, and to share with you that, yes, this is what we're living through right now. But what are you going to, and we're all going to come out of this. Okay, we will. One way or another, we're going to come out, out of this. So, so I like to, you know, tell my clients, okay, what are, what's, what's future self? What's future self Denise gonna, is going to say looking back at this crisis? <laughs> like here we are maybe a month from now. I don't know. April 30th. I don't know. Maybe May, June. Who knows, right? Who knows? Again, future is uncertain at this point. But what I want for people to understand is that you can already envision that future when we are now back in the streets, we're now regular lives, our kids are back at school, maybe, you know, uh, graduates are walking down the platform, you know, we're going back to our offices and, 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 and doing this, you know, uh, you know, intimate, you know, touching and communicating with our people. Like when we get to that point, what are we going to tell ourselves? Wow. We got through that. We, if we got through that, we can get through anything. Or will you tell yourself, shit, I mean, I'm like, that's it. I'm giving up on life. Like I didn't handle that well. I'm just like, forget, forget life. Like, what are you going to tell your future? Like, what is your future self going to tell <laughs> your current self? Like you did good girl. Good job. Great job practicing that grit and grace, right? Because here we are in this current reality and it's not what we want. 
It's not what we want to face. A lot of us are buffering. A lot of us are burying our heads in the sand right now. And so I want to help our people tonight, Deb, you know, get through this journey that we're all on together. So what, what can we share with these folks and help them take it one day at a time? I think it's um, the first is being self-aware. So how are you allowing this environment to um, trigger your behavior? Like I've seen people put their head in the sand. I've seen people just kind of give up. I've seen people um, act with having total floods of anxiety. I've seen people get down to the prepper mode where they're getting super um, suspicious and they're like, I got the guns. I'm like, I'm getting my kids. I'm prepping. Like I've seen all different ranges of it and it's very interesting. And so like one of the things I think is fun to do is kind of look and stand back and look at the patterns mm -hmm. and also understand that yes, the news is here to bring you information. And yes, there is really something that's going on that's affecting our economy and that's creating this new environment that is challenging. And it's your choice what to plug into. It's your choice to get addicted and distracted by, oh, I got to get the next update. You know, like I need to, I need to know what that the next thing is because I've seen a lot of people that are already, and I'm being lovingly honest, are already addicted to, um, um, maybe drama or um, scarcity or fear. This is like, they're like literally, you know, tapping into the IV of it. So be aware of it. Um, and it, on the topic of hypnosis, which is something that I teach, um, we know that when you put on the TV or you plug into social media, you start watching a video within um, one, one, one to 15 seconds, you're in trance. So what, what's happening at the unconscious level is whatever you're watching is getting downloaded into your unconscious mind. Well, your unconscious mind is the part of you that regulates your emotions, your routine thoughts, your behaviors, your actions, your attitudes, your beliefs, your values. It also regulates and um, runs your body. And so if you are plugging into the news, and I'm not saying don't watch the news, what I am saying is monitor how much you do and then um, disconnect from it. Because if you're doing that 24 hours a day, then you are literally downloading, I call it on my, on my, in my groups, it's called fear porn. You're, you're, you're putting all of this addictive type of fear into the unconscious mind. And then if you're feeling anxiety throughout the day, that's, that's why because you're focusing on everything going wrong. And yes, the current situation is challenging. And how can you shift that energy and that focus to something productive? How can you turn this opportunity um, that our environment is facing us and all the challenges and tune in and learn from the situation? Because basically all the things that most people have been suppressing and self-medicating and numbing through their work, um, maybe they, um, or even like Netflix and all this stuff, now that they have, now that they're in this incubator, their triggers are even more. And so this is an awesome opportunity for you to really sift through what's going on inside and get resolution on it and get a handle of it and then start acting and being and having different things in your life and making those decisions now. That's going to set you up for the future self that you look back to now and you're like, holy crap. I literally transformed in this craziness. I took control of my life. I let go of some stuff. I stood in my power. I became the heroine in my own movie because that's literally what we're all doing. We're all in the, in the movie, in the drama. And by the way, a movie without a challenge is kind of boring. So right now we're at the opportunity where the mentor comes in the movie is like, hey, I got these keys and this is how you're going to save your world. And this is how you're going to turn everything around. And you either can step up to the plate or you can decide not to. So it's, that's, that's where I'm at. And, and just being cognizant of that. Um, yeah. Do you want to yeah, add anything? That is so good. Yeah. I mean, listen, when you said the news and the media, you know, putting us in trance. And we, and we know we've heard you know, marketing and subliminal messaging and all that stuff. But a lot of us don't realize why we are addicted to the media or why we are addicted to platforms like um, the one that we're on right now and all the other social media platforms. They're designed to keep us in trance, designed to keep us anchored and in place. And so, so much, so much 
triggering is happening at the unconscious level. And we have no idea. Here we are creating by default. Here we are creating these results that are so unfulfilling and so painful. And not until we reach that pivotal moment and go, what the hell did I just do? How did I create this in my life? That's when we get conscious, we get, we get to a conscious level and we start questioning everything. We start questioning our beliefs. We start questioning our models. We start questioning our values. We start questioning the unconscious and what has been programmed in us as children, as young adults, and even through our life experiences. So I feel like it takes us reaching a breaking point before we go, oh, I'm awake now. I, let me go do something about it. Hey, Deb, what you got for me? Because I, I got I to gotta reprogram myself. So like, let's not wait until that moment, right? Like right now, like, like you said, we're inundated, we're, we're sequestered all here, you know, quarantine. Now's the time, right? To do some self-reflection. Now's the time to do some growth and expansion. Now's the time to start everything. And so I'm with you on the whole media thing. And that's a scary, that's scary to know, right? Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's not anything personal. I mean, this may say, sound very controversial and is a known fact that back in 2001, whenever 9-11 happened, that the news realized very quickly that every time they showed the, the towers over and over and over again, they got higher ratings. And so they learned very quickly that ratings or um, tragedy and trauma equals ratings. And so, I mean, it's, it's, they are giving you information of what the current event is, but again, start filtering. Like, do I really want to watch this over and over again right now? Do I choose to plug into this radio station or do I choose to plug into prosperity and abundance and um, figuring out how this significant emotional event is going to create because in every significant emotional event in every single one's life that I've ever spoken to, if they're consciously aware of it, they will find that they get wisdom from it. And they also have an influx of opportunity and prosperity on the other side. It's just like whenever the, uh, the market crashes, there's always an influx going back up. Mm -hmm. So it's like figuring out what that is for all of us individually and collectively, then we can co-create the reality that they want to, we want to be living in and that we're happy and proud of. There was a lot of things that was going on in the world, and there still is, I'm sure, <laughs> that aren't necessarily a humane way of living. And so this is a really great opportunity for us to reset and stand back and look at our beliefs and values. And are they serving the children that are coming into this world? Are they serving us and allowing us to have prosperous lives in true freedom? And I mean, true freedom, not the illusion of freedom. Mm -hmm. I liked how you took that from the personal self, personal to expanding this to the collective consciousness, you know, looking at those children that are coming through in these new generations or in these third world countries or in, you know, countries where um, there's a lot of poverty and scarcity and, and, and whatever. I liked how you took it because that's kind of the shift that I just felt was, oh, so here I am suffering at this individual level, but let's, like, there's the ripple effect from my own individual decisions and how I can ultimately affect many other communities, many other countries, many other, you know, groups and tribes that, that are, that are, you know, that we could, we could, you know, impact or influence. And I kind of like this little shift happened in my body, like, Ooh, I, I'm, I'm hearing you, Deb. Is that what you were putting down? Cause I'm picking up what you're putting yeah, down, girl. Girl, that's what I'm throwing down. I hope you're catching it. Cause I feel you too. I mean, it is a known fact that anxiety is contagious. Yeah. And um, so is aggression. And uh, so is uh, any of the lower, lower negative emotions, but also the uh, being happy and laughter and thriving and high vibration is contagious. I truly believe that if there was, even if, I don't, I don't know what the percentage would be, but I'm just guesstimating. But if there was like maybe five to 1% of the population that was like, hey, we're going to shift things. We're going to focus on creating the future of all of our dreams that is 
healthy, happy, the environment is thriving. Um, everybody has as much food and resources and we're all doing our unique superpower and doing our part to evolve as human beings. I believe we could shift anything. Yeah. I love, it's just I love. tapping into the coherence. And it first starts with us because we can't tune into something that we're not experiencing in the individual level. That's right. That's so important. We have to take care of ourselves first. You're right. We can't give what we don't have to give for ourselves. Like what we don't have for ourselves, we can't give to others. And I love yeah. that you said that. So something I'll share with um, with you all watching uh, and with you, Deb, there is this Netflix documentary called Push. Have you know this documentary, Deb, have you heard of this? What is it? It's called Push. I've never heard of it. So Ooh. really, really, yes, something you all need to watch because it freaked me out. So it's a documentary. There's, um, I guess he, he would, he, he would be called, um, I guess, a, um, a mental strategist, uh, almost like, um, a, what David Blaine like guy where, you know, magic and, you know, magician and, and maybe a little bit of trance and stuff involved in that. There's this man out of the UK and he's very well known and he, you know, does the, these things with celebrities and has a lot of connections with all these celebrities. They, he spearheaded this, this uh, behind the scenes event where he actually pulled people or um, auditioned people to, to, to play these parts, uh, to play a part in his game. And they didn't know they were playing the game. Right? They didn't know they were actually pawns in his strategy. And the point was, he wanted to see which one of these participants, which one would murder, which one would go so far by auto suggestions and by, you know, going with the group think and, you know, being in that heightened state of fear and anxiety and, and, and just, you know, actually murdering someone because someone told them to do it. And so it's, I won't say any more, but it is really interesting. And there were some participants who did murder, quote unquote murder. No one died, but it was, it was to test how conscious they were and to test how strong their will was when it came to hurting another human being. It's called push, crazy. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not that surprised though. I mean, there's the, it's called the sheeple mentality where they unconsciously, if they're not paying attention and they don't, and it's not that they're not smart, it's just, they're ignorant and they're not conscious yet. And so, um, they'll walk right off a bridge if they're, if their leader tells them to, and yeah. you know, it, and that's the thing. It's like, okay, so when are we going to take responsibility? And it, it goes back to thinking for yourself when it, and it co comes to what you're plugging into. It's like, okay, so when are we going to take responsibility for thinking for ourselves and critically thinking through and asking questions like, does this serve me? And if it doesn't, then get it out of your life because there are so many other things that when, when you're, when you're allowing yourself to be attacked like by information or people, it doesn't allow you to have the space to create. And when you're in a heightened sense or sense of fear or um, negative emotions, you can't solve problems from there and you can't make good decisions. So it's, it's our responsibility as leaders, as well as moms, dads, sisters, brothers, daughters to figure out a way to get in control of the mind so you can get into a creative flow state to then tap into your intuition and figure out what, what decision is best for you. And nobody can tell you what the best decision is for you. Only you can do that. Oh, so good. So, so that this is a perfect segue into an alternative modality that's also a little controversial. So are you ready to get into some controversy with me, Deb Yeager? Yes, please. That was what I, that's what I thrive in. I'm a little bit of a rebel, but I'm always asking questions, you know, at school that I was like, why, 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 why do we need to learn this? Why? What's, what's behind that? And they're like, shut up. You don't need to know why I told you so. I'm like, that's not good enough for me. <laughs> I'm like, That's there's more to this reality than that, what they're teaching. I'm, you know, I like, I'm a seeker. I need to know the answers and I'm cool with not knowing, but I'm going to yeah. continue to go down the path of learning. <laughs> I love that perspective. 
perspective. And I want us to get into this controversial topic because you mentioned, you know, harnessing the power of your mind, right? And, and, and tapping into the unconscious and, and, you know, questioning everything and seeking, you know, transformation. And, and, and like you, you know, said, you know, tapping into that creative power that we each individually have. And so one of those modalities that I've come to love and to use is hypnotherapy. And I want us to, you know, dispel all those myths or misconceptions that we have heard about hypnotherapy. So what is the biggest myth or misconception that you've had to bust uh, when it comes to hypnotherapy? Well, it's the, it, people think it's magic. They think it's voodoo and they think it's um, sometimes witchcraft. We, I've heard mind control, um, you name it. So, and it's so misly understood. It's so sad. <laughs> like hypnosis is so awesome. We're in trance right now. We are. I mean, every time people plug into TV, they're in trance. I mean, that's that the biggest hypnotherapist that ever lived was, is TV. That's why it's called programming. And before that, it was church. And before that, it was plays. And before that, it was storytelling. I mean, we've been hypnotizing each other since the beginning of time. Before that was symbols, a way of passing down information. Um, and they've been using hypnosis. I mean, it goes way back beyond um, written times, but you can even find it in like sleeping temples in Babylon and um, some ancient Samaria. I mean, it's been known for a very long time. It's just that it has been almost demonized because it's misunderstood mm -hmm. and it's a powerful modality for um, tapping into creativity reprogramming thoughts um, uh, bad habits I mean you can do a session of hypnosis one time and somebody would stop smoking and that's considered a very addictive thing however hypnosis is fabulous for that. So imagine if you can stop a bad habit like that, that people struggle with for years and never sometimes ever get a, um, never get a hold of it. Imagine what you could do if you were struggling with anxiety, or if you're struggling with feeling unworthy or having, um, you know, maybe a bad habit around food. It's powerful because it's tapping right into the unconscious mind and your unconscious mind is the one that runs all that 95 percent of us it's the it's the behaviors that like i said before the emotional thoughts the the habits the routines the beliefs the values you can unlock limiting beliefs through hypnosis so it is very very powerful and underrated and unfortunately very misunderstood of really what it is yeah, absolutely. And I have to admit, I was probably one of those leaders that did not understand the power of hypnosis until I was under, until I was in trance, until I learned the history, the origins, how to use it. It's, a, it's an alternative and yes, controversial for some. And I wanted to present this to our, our community today, Deb, because so many of us are suffering right now from anxiety, from fear, from stress. And a lot of life's challenges on the normal day, you know, under normal circumstances, we're already, you know, wreaking havoc in our lives. Now with this heightened state of fear and anxiety and uncertainty, I think hypnosis is something that we really need to share and talk to, to our friends about, especially my, my amazing leaders who are executives, who are, you know, formally trained, some of them in, in, in leadership development. And this is a beautiful alternative modality that when understood can be powerful for transformation. But that's when the person is willing and is open to, to do hypnotherapy, not only for themselves, but if, you know, I do have some, some coaches that I also coach and these are women who are entrepreneurs and these are women who are, you know, looking to build their six, seven figure empires. And these are women who I can easily see beliefs and values and things that are keeping them from moving forward. And, and a session of hypnotherapy or certification in hypnotherapy would be ideal for them and for their clients. So whether you're a leader, whether you're an entrepreneur, or whether you're a mom, whether you are you know, a stay-at-home parent, like this is an alternative modality. You know, it's not you know, clinical therapy. We're not looking at that. We're not looking at coaching. This is something very, very 
uh, it's, it, it taps into the deepest parts of your unconscious mind. And it's quite transformational and really powerful. And so tell me a little bit, Deb, about how, how, how you've used hypnotherapy with your clients. You mentioned smoking, right? And like quitting smoking after the first session. Anything else that we could you know, talk about uh, without mentioning your clients' names, of course, but because of what we're dealing with right now, anything that would resonate with our people out there? Oh, yeah. Um, hypnosis is highly effective for um, performance in any area, sex, <laughs> sleep. Uh, if you want to be able to go to sleep and stay asleep all night long, instead of having the monkey mind, which is very, very important right now, especially for our leaders and business owners and entrepreneurs, because the heightened stress usually will then kick off a strategy for you to stay awake up all night. So hypnosis will allow you to go to sleep and stay asleep. Um, also weight loss. So since your unconscious mind runs the body, you can communicate directly to the unconscious mind to have you only crave the healthy foods with the right amount of food, only that makes you the right size. So there's specific things that you can do that will help you change the behavior around food also to speed up your metabolism. That's pretty mm -hmm. cool too. Um, you can also tap into ultimate creativity. So I have worked with uh, CEOs to put them into induction to then activate their heightened sense of creativity to solve problems at the visionary level. Um, we have done, we've sped up learning for adults and kids through hypnosis. So you can speed up the learning process. You can speed up the, and um, retain memories easily to where if you go to test time, then you know exactly what to write down when the test comes to you. Um, there is so many different applications. You can reprogram um, your belief systems about feeling good enough and stepping into your power and asking for what you want. Um, you can uh, treat social anxiety. You can lower anxiety. You can actually have anxiety. Well, your unconscious mind has the ability through hypnosis to have anxiety go away. I'm not saying that I'm doing it. They're doing it. By the way, all this work, I'm not doing it. They are doing it. Because hypnosis is a do with process. It's not a do to process. It's we don't have power over them. They are following instructions and their unconscious mind is doing the work. We're just facilitating. And there is nothing different between guided meditation and hypnosis. The difference, the only difference there is, is that hypnosis has a process that you can take somebody through to do a specific breakthrough or to activate with volition versus guided meditation is... Um, you know, it's, it's kind of wherever you go. And I'm sure there are different processes for guided meditation, but hypnosis has a step-by-step -step procedure that you go through that you can do inductions with um, specific intentions and then how to program at the unconscious level. And then you bring the person out. Wow. Okay, so you covered so many possible clients or, or participants. I mean, you talked about uh, you know, someone who's suffering from weight loss or insomnia or someone who is looking for performance development. You're, you're talking about leaders. You're talking about athletes. You're talking about moms and dads. You're talking about entrepreneurs. You're talking about every, actually every single person can benefit from hypnotherapy. Exactly. I love that you, you've introduced this into the leadership world. You've introduced this to CEOs. Like you said, you know, you, you take them through induction and then you get, you, you tap into this unconscious uh, superpower that we all have, I think. And as leaders, all the pressure and the responsibilities that we leaders have, I mean, to be able to take it to that deepest level of your mind and to, and, and all for the intention of you know, uh, creativity or for more self-assurance or for, you know, you know, more confidence in their roles and to deal with stress and overwhelm. I love how this is something that the leadership industry desperately needs, but yes, we all do. We can all benefit from, from this work of hypnotherapy. Love it. It has so, so many applications and it really is used a lot, but it's just used behind the scenes. A lot of people, I mean, all kinds of stars have used it for all different types of things, for addiction, to stuttering, to communication, to um, believing in themselves, to actually tap into more of their character when they're doing a role. 
Um, if you look it up, you can find it. It's, it's pretty incredible. And it's, it's the little old thing that people don't talk about. And, and it's, it's fine. There's a lot of coaches that use it and don't advertise about it, but that's one of the reasons why they get a lot of amazing results. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. So tell us, Deb, what's, what's on the horizon? What can we, what can we uh, share with our, our watchers and listeners? What do you have coming up? What, can, where can we find your information? What, what do you have to share with us, my friend? Well, it's interesting that we're talking about hypnosis because we have a hypnosis three-day retreat. And I kind of like say it's a spa for the mind. It's virtual. Um, it starts on Friday and ends on Sunday. And we are going to take you through a series of inductions um, for you to have your own breakthrough. So whatever somebody is working on, let's say that they want to relieve stress and anxiety um, or let go of overwhelm or um, maybe get better sleep, then you will get to do your own hypnosis breakthrough. And part of the training too um, is a certification. So um, we are teaching it at the understanding of the certification level, which is really powerful because we teach it in the frame of self-hypnosis, but also if you want to use it with someone you love. And my intention by this. I mean, we've had this training for quite some time, but we just, we started doing it virtual because of the situation. Uh, my intention for this is, is many people to learn hypnosis for them to go out and then work with other people that they love and care about right now that need to get in control of their mind. Mm -hmm. Because uh, again, and I know that I've said this quite a few, your unconscious mind is like the, is, is the doorway to everything that you want in your life. And your unconscious mind, I didn't say this before, has the keys to your higher self. You can't conscious mind to your higher self. You must go through the unconscious mind. So once you get in rapport with yourself and you can reprogram and let go of some of the stuff, then you can tap into your intuition, your ultimate communication, your ultimate knowing of exactly what to do in the right time, knowing exactly what to say in the right moment, knowing exactly what decision to make to make sure that you, your family, your lineage, the future self of you is stepping into the right decision at the right time for you to, I mean, be the person you want to become. Oh my goodness. Uh, so first of all, Friday through Sunday. Yeah. So it's virtual training. Like you said, this is a training that you've taken from, from a workshop of, you know, a face-to-face -face workshop to now virtual. So then now all of us can do this. So exactly. now, I mean, again, we're all home right now. And right now is the time to seize the opportunity to expand and to grow. And I loved how you said, sure, we could use this as coaches. We could use this as leaders on ourselves. But I love how you are, are looking to help the average person out there help themselves and someone they love in this current climate with this search situation. And this tool will serve you whether we're in a crisis or not. It's going to carry you through the rest of your life. And it's a wonderful modality that can, like you said, can help you reach your highest and greatest self. And I love that this is virtual. How amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, that, I, I think about all the, all the things that Brandon and I um, do together. And one of the things is like, whenever I'm having trouble sleeping, he can do hypnosis with me. So like, it's, it's being able to have another tool in this interesting time that we're living in that no matter what's going on in your family unit, you have a way to help them get through some stuff. And that's, that's really the intention. And, and of course, if somebody is coaching and they want another tool for their toolkit, absolutely. This is a training for you. But even if you aren't doing any formal coaching, then this is a tool that I believe everyone should have in their tool bag to where if they are having trouble sleeping, bam, you can do some self-hypnosis. You can even record yourself and do your own induction if you want to perform better. So you can um, rise above between all the sea of people, then this is a great opportunity for you to create your own hypnosis track and give you, put those, put, put those, um, it's kind of like, you know, affirmations, well, affirmations is surface level. Hypnosis actually allows the affirmations to go into the unconscious mind. So anything that you want to affirm to yourself, you can do an induction and then download all those affirmations at the unconscious level where you're actually going to get the result you're looking for. Amazing. Amazing. And, and I'm so, so grateful that a thought leader like you, an expert in your field has taken this 
virtually because I mean, there's so many more people that you, that we could reach that are not in Austin, right? That that are out there who who need this tool, who need this this uh, modality to help them, you know, transform their lives. So thank you for doing that for all of us. And 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 where can we find information about this upcoming training? Um, yes, absolutely. I have an Eventbrite, and we're actually running a special. This is because of the 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 COVID situation. Um, normally the training is $1,500, $1,595 for the certification in three days. Um, we're actually marking it down to $395 for, because we want it, we want everybody to do it and there's no limit. We don't have a capacity, so we could have as many people as, um, are ready to learn and transform. So, um, yeah, I would love to, if anyone has any questions, I can put my, um, information and the thing as well. So we could connect um, and I'll send you over the Eventbrite as well. Yes, please send it to me and I will okay. make sure that I post it um, here where we're watching this video um, as well as send this out to my leader clients and all of those who I serve. This would be an opportunity for us all to use something very different, but yet, yet impactful and very powerful. So Deb, thank you so very much for joining me tonight. I love that we are masterminding together. We're talking about our, we talked about our current climate. We talked about these fears that we're all facing, this anxiety, the stress. Some days are better than others. There are ups and downs. There's this shift that is constantly happening <laughs> that, it's that we're getting used to. Every time we hear something in the news, we shift a little bit and we are practicing grit we're practicing grace for the situation that we're all living through right now. And thank you so much for sharing those tips, sharing what we're, you know, this hypnosis that we are <laughs> experiencing unwillingly through the media, through the news. And right now is a time for you to take action, everyone. Take some action here. It's time for growth and expansion. So seize this opportunity while you are home right now with your children and you're working remotely. I know my leaders are all leading from, from, from behind, you know, virtually behind their computers right now, which is a shift for everyone right now. We're living through a very unusual time, but when you have tools and modalities like the one Deb just presented to us, why not seize this opportunity? Why not? add it to your toolbox of your leadership skills or your parenting skills, or just on an individual level. I mean, this is something that, that not a lot of people like to talk about is hypnotherapy. And it's, and it's, a, it's, if it's understood, it is used. And when it is used, it is transformational. So Deb, share with us some final words before we say goodbye to our friends. I just want to say thank you so much for having me on. You are such an amazing beam of light and I am so grateful to have you in my life and you are my dear sister friend. I love you. I love you. Thank you for masterminding with me. Expert yeah, girl. master. <laughs> I, um, I would love to do this again and I want to have you on as well. So let's keep this rolling. Let's, let's bring controversial topics um, in and talk about it and talk about different angles about it without making decisions. <laughs> that makes sense. I am your partner in controversy. How about I love it? <laughs> all right, everyone, make sure you post your comments, all of your questions. We'll get to them after our show. We've already kept you on for almost an hour now. I will make sure that I post all this information that Deb just shared with us. Please take advantage of this opportunity. It's going to be so powerful and impactful. And I can't wait to hear more about hypnosis, NLP, and, and timeline therapy with you, Deb. So we'll, we'll, pick the, we'll pick up this conversation soon, okay? Quantum manifestation too. <laughs> All right, my friend. We'll see All you right. soon. Y'all take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like our content and you want to see more, hit the subscribe button below. We'll be posting videos every single week. And if you want to learn more about NLP or a certification program or even performance coaching, come join us on our website at jaegertraining.com and you can find the link in the description below. We hope to see you on the next video. Thank you.